A circular city is most practically divided via pathways into areas known as radial sectors and circular belts, also known as circulars or rings. The radial sectors, separated by pathways, are subdivided by circular belts, also separated by pathways, which extend outward from a central point, forming a widening, circular grid structure. As the circle widens, more circular belts follow until the perimeter is reached, wherein the environment is allowed to return to wild nature without any form of sprawl. In other words, these circular cities are composed of a central area beyond which the geometry takes the form of radial and circular segments. In most configurations, there is a differentiation of primary functioning between belts and sometimes within segments of a belt itself. In other words, each circular belt and or radial segment maintains a particular set of functions, some of which will be unique to that circular belt and will give the belt its name. Other functions are shared between belts. The core function of the recreation belt, for example, is to provide recreational services and structures. Secondarily, however, the recreational belt maintains permacultural land and aquatic spaces for the growth of food and natural beauty. Although every circular belt will have a core identifying function, all belts are multifunctional. There are a variety of reasons why a circular city scheme is more efficient than other city layouts. Firstly, when you start at one point on a circle and move along that point, you eventually come back to the same point. When it is a linear city within which you are moving, you have to travel back again, in other words, backtrack, over the same area, instead of just going around. Hence, when traveling within a circular city, someone could easily return to the same place from where they started without having to take the same route back, as is the case with most linear cities. Secondly, circular city designs place frequently used facilities, mass transit, medical, and other common access locations near the center. This puts most of the residential population very near in time and space to the city center and ensures that travel throughout the city is relatively easy. Hence, no matter where you are in a circular city, you will be within a reasonable distance to access every facility the city has to offer. A circular-shaped city ensures that no access point on the circle is ever further away than half the circumference of the circle itself, which is an important design consideration for emergency response. Conversely, a squared shape maintains that no point is further away from any other than the Manhattan distance, the distance between two points as 90 degree horizontal and vertical paths on a square grid, versus acute diagonals within a circular grid. Fourth, a planned circular design minimizes the length of all transportation and distribution lines in comparison to a linear design, less to build, less to maintain, and hence more efficient. Fifth. Consider that a grid inside a circle would combine the advantages of best use of space with a most understandable addressing system. A circle, however, provides the most efficient form of infrastructural elements required for its outer perimeter. Only one shape of interlocking element is required over two shapes, straight and right angled, for a square. Sixth, the circular design allows for one pie-like sector of the city to be designed and then replicated around the circle six to eight times, with slight adaptations for functional differentiation to form the entire city. In the design and production of a circular city, we work out one-sixth or one-eighth of the city system, and then we reproduce it around a central point. The replication of a circular sector around a central axis, returning to the original sector itself, uses fewer resources than conventional construction methods for linear cities. In market terminology, these cities are extremely cost-efficient because only one radial sector needs to be designed, which can then be duplicated repeatedly and slightly versioned for the completion of the entire city. Seventh, a circular layout is easily replicated at different scales. These cities can be designed for a couple hundred people or scaled up to population sizes of 100,000 or more. And finally, at least for this discussion, the circular arrangement is also a useful geometric design for mirroring natural symbiotic cultivation cycles. Circular symbiotic farming, for example, is often applied as part of the last circular belt of these cities. In general, a well-designed and aesthetic circular city tends to feel more harmonious and open than its equivalent as a linear city. We do live on a sphere of sorts, and from a two-dimensional perspective, the planet upon which 
we live takes the shape of a circle. It may be interesting to consider that the motions of nature move in spheres and rings, and all cosmic bodies seem to move in spiraling arcs. It is true that squares can be more easily compacted than circles, but when designing city systems for community, beyond the perimeter of the city, we allow the environment to return to wild nature. So, whereas a linear or squared city would just continue adding blocks to itself, instead, community would allow a return to nature prior to the creation of another circular city. A city with square blocks can expand indefinitely by placing another block next to the prior, while a city with a circular block cannot do so with geometric alignment. A circular city is one circular grid reducing to a central axis. Of course, if a circular city requires expansion for some reason, it is still possible to do so with geometric alignment by extending the city radially, segment by segment. In fact, this is one method by which to assemble the city in the first place. And furthermore, if circular farming was used on the outer segmented belt during the city's phased construction, the soil base could be built up as the city was assembled, belt by belt, to its planned size. But remember, in community, we don't want indefinite city economic or otherwise expansion on our finite planet. In general, when a city reaches carrying capacity, another city will be built, separated by nature some calculated distance away from the prior. Alternatively, some elements of the city could expand vertically to widen its carrying capacity. Of course, it is worth noting here that cities aren't generally built on a flat surface. Even planned cities have to work around natural features in the terrain. That is, to the degree to which the site has been appropriately selected and the terrain is capable of being modified. The circular city is simply a theoretical, optimal design. Local topography and geography will, in many cases, change the design slightly. Take note that the stylized elements of buildings and areas in these cities can be customized to the preferred and traditional cultural aesthetics of the local geographic population. For example, Buildings in a community city in China, Japan, India, Europe, the Americas, Africa, or the Middle East may have stylized design elements traditional to those locales. 